What's up guys, this is Mohamed and today I'm going to tell you the top 6 cameras you'd want to get in 2020. So it's almost time for us to upgrade our cameras. We've been using the Panasonic GH5 for our videography and Panasonic G9 for our photography for almost 2 years now. So it's almost time and we're looking into the options to upgrade from these current cameras. So I'm going to tell you the top 3 cameras that I'm looking at for video work and the top 3 cameras that we're looking at for the photography side of things. So starting with my number 1 for videography is the Canon 1DX Mark III. Now this is a humongous DSLR, the top of the line Canon DSLR camera and it's got some of the best video specs you can find on any camera. So it does full frame 4K60 with no crop at 10-bit 422 and it also has a 5.5K raw video internal. All of that with the glorious Canon dual pixel autofocus. And that is the main reason I'm looking at this camera even though it doesn't have IBIS and it's very big so it means we have to change all of our equipment to be able to fit that into our gimbals and cages but the 4K 60 10-bit with the Canon dual pixel autofocus is good enough of a combination to make me think of maybe I need to lift some weights. Of course with this camera you also get one of the best if not the best sports photography camera. Now sport is not something that I shoot personally but if the opportunity comes up it's good to know that I have the equipment for it. And it also means that I can use the EF lenses that I own on this camera so no new lenses to buy here. Another camera that I'm looking at from Canon that's been announced but not fully yet is the Canon EOS R5 which promises 8K video with full frame, no crop and dual pixel autofocus. Now 8K I'm not really interested in. We don't really shoot anything that demands 8K and we don't even know if the 8K will be 10-bit 422 or not but I'm waiting to see if Canon is going to put 4K 10-bit at 60 frames per second in this camera with the Canon dual pixel autofocus. If they do then scrap the 1DX Mark III and put in the EOS R5 instead of it because of a lighter body and the new RF mount which has probably my dream lens in it which is the 28 to 70 f2. As a videographer if you're ever out shooting in the field especially something like a wedding or something that is the action is constantly happening and you need to keep up with it you know that changing a lens can mean missing a very important and crucial moment. And so to have a lens that does it all that has all the focal lengths you could want with a very bright aperture is probably the dream lens for me. So if the Canon EOS R5 has that capability, then I'm going to switch over to that, most probably. At number three comes in the Fujifilm X-T4. Now the X-T3 was already a fantastic camera. The only things that it was missing was better battery life and IBIS. And here comes the X-T4, which has much better battery life and a very good IBIS. And with it, you get the best APS-C camera on the market today. The only gripe I have with it is the form factor. I just can't put my hands on something that has no grip on it, especially because I like using heavier lenses. I'm one of those weirdos that doesn't like lighter, smaller lenses. <laughs> now, supposedly the X-T4 has a deeper grip and you can still put the battery grip on it to get a bigger grip. I just I never liked the ergonomics of the Fujifilm X-T line. Now if Fujifilm were to come out with an X-H2 with all of X-T4's specs, then that would be one hell of a camera. So moving on to the photography side of things, the top three cameras that we're looking to replace the G9 with are the following. So coming in at number one is the Leica SL2. Now this is a very personal and subjective pick. It's not a very objective or scientific pick because you can get the Panasonic S1R, which is the Leica SL2, but much, much cheaper, almost half the price, but it's not a Leica. And we've always wanted to have a workhorse of a camera with the Leica brand on it. Of course, with it, you get that beautiful 47 megapixels, full frame sensor, and the gorgeous Leica look, which for us is important because we have to deliver straight out of camera JPEGs to our customers. And to have that Leica look, we think will improve our work. Now is it justified to spend 6000 on a camera? Probably not for most people but if you want that Leica you have to pay for it. Coming in at number two is the Panasonic S1. Now the Panasonic S1 is the lower megapixel brother of the Panasonic S1R coming in at 24 megapixels on a full frame sensor but still has all of the modes and the functions of the S1R 
and also has better video specs, which is good for me, so I can steal it from her and use it for my work sometimes. Now we're looking at this camera because it's much, much cheaper than the Leica, it's a third of the Leica. And because of its lower megapixel count, you get better low light capabilities, which we find ourselves in quite often. But you still get the SL mounts, which means you can buy those gorgeous Leica SL lenses and put it on there. Coming in at number three is the Sony a7R Mark IV. Now the Sony a7R Mark IV is probably the best mirrorless photography camera you can get these days. It's got a full frame sensor, 10 frames per second shooting burst, and the best autofocus in a mirrorless camera that you can find. And it's got a bigger grip, which helped the ergonomics of the Sony cameras. If you didn't like those before, it should be much better. And one last honorable mention before we sign off is the Nikon D780. This is a modest update to the Nikon D750, which is still uh, one of the most beloved cameras on the market. If you go on professional photography websites, you'll find that a lot of people are still using a D750 for their professional work. It's a workhorse of a camera and the D780 introduces some of that mirrorless technology that Nikon put in the Z7 and the Z6 into the D780. So you almost get the best of both worlds if you prefer the optical viewfinder of the DSLR format. Which means looking through the viewfinder you get the DSLR autofocus capabilities and when you turn on the live view you get the mirrorless autofocus capabilities, which is a very, very fantastic combination to have. So just to summarize, here are the top three cameras that I mentioned for video and photo separately. For video, number one, Canon 1DX Mark III. Number two, Canon EOS R5, which still has not been fully announced yet. And number three, Fujifilm X-T4. For photography, at number one is the Leica SL2, number two, Panasonic S1, and number three, uh, Sony A7R Mark IV, with the honorable mention of Nikon D780. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. Please leave a like and let us know what you think in the comments and subscribe to my channel. Thank you until next time. And I'm going to go into the wild now. All right, cut.